Please open your Bibles to the New Testament, to the letter to the Hebrews. And I want us to look at chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13. In the first part of this chapter, chapter 13, we find uh, several admonitions from the inspired writer regarding, first of all, if you'll notice in verse 1, how Christians are to and how they can show brotherly love. Now, think for a moment how many times in reading your New Testament that Paul talks about the brotherly love that should exist between brothers and sisters in Christ. Then you'll notice also that he'll talk about being hospitable. And he'll talk about uh, remembering brethren in prison. I think sometimes, I'll pause and interject this, when even Christ said visiting those in prison that we think about prison situations as they are today. Well, of course, they had people in prison then that were criminals and they deserved to be in prison, people even who were put to death. But also you had a lot of folks put in prison because they couldn't pay their bills. For hundreds and hundreds of years thereafter, there were debtors' prisons. There were people in those prisons they had no way of being able to be fed or if they were sick or hurt to be taken care of except that their own people would do so and you would be surprised today in hospitals in developing nations how the, while they have a hospital and they have a bed even the families have to supply the sheets and come change the sheets and all those particular matters we become so accustomed to what we have here, we just think that's everywhere, but it's not. So when he says, uh, remember brethren in prison, then he's not just talking about the died in the wool murderer. He's talking about people who may not necessarily be guilty of real criminal offenses, but yet they're in prison and they need to be mindful, especially that'd be the case if you were arrested and put in prison because simply you're a Christian. He talks about holding marriage in honor. Uh, people today don't do that. That is speaking in generalities throughout the nation. They don't think anything much about marriage. And then he talks about being content all the way down through verse 6. Uh, that's a great thing. Paul said godliness with contentment is a great thing. To be able to be content with where you are and circumstances you're in. doesn't say be satisfied, but it does say learn to be content. Paul said, I have learned to be content, whatever position he was in. So there are those things that the writer of Hebrews reminds these brethren of. Now remember, the whole book of Hebrews was written to Jews who were Christians, but due to temptations, they were actually thinking about giving up the New Testament system and going back under Law of Moses, but it's interesting that here at the end of the book, he also reminds them of their duty as Christians. Now, some of these uh, faithful Jews under the law, when it was in effect, would have been things they would have needed to have done. So it's in that context that I find a statement I want to dwell on for a moment. It pertains to instructions about hospitality. And it has led to questions, speculations about some brethren. And the question simply is, and I'll read the passage first in verse 2, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Again, Hebrews 3, 2. So the question I'm asking now in the light of all of what I've just said in these admonitions concerning Christian conduct, being faithful in the church, is it possible or can we entertain angels today? Well, let's note again what is said here. Be not forgetful. That's something I cannot forget. 
remind you of Peter saying, this second epistle I now write unto you, in which both I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. So you can learn something the first time, but sometimes you have to be reminded and reminded over the years of what you learned a long time ago. Be not forgetful to entertain as strangers. The word entertain is interesting here. We usually use the word entertainment now, such as somebody uh, putting on some sort of dramatic play or some musical whatever. But in fact, the word entertainment, I'm entertaining your attention right now, certainly is a different type of entertainment. So we have to be careful about what we mean even by that. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. The question I would ask is, begin the study, is what does it mean to entertain angels? Now, we all know the word angel, angelos, basically means spirit being. But angelos sometimes, because it means messenger, it also could be applied to human beings who are messengers. In the Greek language, it could have been applied that way. But there are those spirit beings that are angels, such as Gabriel, Michael, and so forth. Spirit beings created a little above our station, because we're created a little below the angels. And they are created for a given purpose. And they're in heaven, and they are supernatural beings. They're spiritual beings. They don't have a body. Now, what does it mean to entertain angels? That's one thing. Another question is, who did entertain them? Because the writer of Hebrews says, some have. That's pretty plain in the past, the time of his writing this letter, said some have entertained angels unawares. And if it is the case that we can do so, and I never hear this brought up too much by those who think we can entertain angels. How do you entertain an angel? <laughs> think about that for a minute. Well, before we uh, address these questions, let us realize that the context of this is that the, what the Bible teaches about hospitality. Sometimes we can get drawn away from the th main thrust and topic by something that captivates our mind that's unusual. Maybe we would not even express ourselves in the same way today as he did. But keep in mind the Holy Spirit inspired this writer to write this. Now the reason this is a case simply because the verse deals with hospitality. I want to drive a peg down right there and emphasize that point. It doesn't deal with angels. It deals with hospitality. And you've got to realize why the angels were brought into it in the first place. And what is that? Angels are mentioned by the inspired writer to illustrate the point. What's the point? Being hospitable. Christians are to have a character that's always hospitable. People have long talked about southern hospitality. I don't know sometimes what they meant, but most times they meant eating. Well, there was a time in not the too distant past which people coming through town because of transportation, the way things were more than 100 years ago, they would simply put up people coming through town. When I say put up, I mean give them a place to sleep, have something to eat, this kind of thing. In those days, when you think about most people being relatively poor, really, the common person, the only way they had to travel was walking. They might ride a donkey. Usually the donkey and the camel were considered beast of burden. Well, of course, that means you could ride one, and they did. But they also put great uh, things they wanted to ship. That was their FedEx and UPS of the day. <laughs> and you had camels used because they can go so long without water in those arid desert places. Nevertheless, that was what they had. They didn't think anything about it because that's what it was. It was there. We were... I was mentioning to Jody last night, something came up and 
I have to remind myself of this sometimes because it really hadn't been that long ago, but it was so common. I remember so very well when I was four, five, six, first memories I have, we didn't even own much of a car until uh, I was a few years old. But people were walking a lot more then. They walked a whole lot. Highway 7 ran in front of our house, and the road was full of people walking to and from. They had to walk a mile or two. They didn't think anything about it. They struck off. And uh, even you had a city bus line that ran for a while, but why wait on a bus when you could walk there? Sometimes people walk to a place, and then they catch the bus back, things like that. But I remember when they were having a um, school I went to would have their Friday night football. And from where we lived to where the football stadium was, I would say it was at least two miles, probably a little more. And I can remember going, and to be, the, the road is, we used to say back at home, be full of people walking that far and further to go to the ball game. And I can remember coming back and trying to walk, and I'd be begging Daddy to carry me. He wouldn't until I begged him long enough, and finally he had mercy on me. And I can remember it just as plain as it could be, people walking. Nobody thought a thing about it. And, of course, you take your life in your hands if you get up and try to walk up and down the road here now. But there were people all over the place. You had certain, I remember an old man by the name of Mr. Joyce lived just up from us. He would walk at the same time down to Cullendale, which is a little suburb, you would call it that nowadays, where we lived. And it was about a half mile below the house, probably three-quarters for him. He'd walk it every day, go to the liquor store. He'd come back. He wouldn't be walking quite straight, but he'd wobble back, and that was every day he had his time to go. And you could, you could just think of all sorts of people that walk. Well, we don't think a thing about that nowadays. But it helps in studying the Scriptures to try to put your mind into the customs and the ways of people then when these things, these instructions are given. And showing hospitality was, a, was something that you were concerned about with people traveling and as they had to travel and their state of affairs. It was a common practice. I like to read things that go on back from my old stomping grounds in Arkansas when it's published about uh, things happened well over 100 years ago. I've been reading a diary part of it of 1861. Very interesting uh, as the year the Civil War started because those places are still there and I visited them in my time. Not anything like they were then, but they're there. And uh, you think of uh, places, they said, well, it took two hours to get from this place to Prescott, Arkansas. Two hours, I doubt it's a 20-minute drive nowadays, and that's on back roads. And you think of all that kind of thing. Well, part of biblical hermeneutics, the tools of understanding the scriptures, is to not bring these things over the way we do things now. It won't work. It'll cloud the, your mind. So when you think of hospitality, yes, we're still to show hospitality. Yes, we're concerned about other folk. But it's a different situation in visiting prisons and in showing hospitality. Different situation indeed. So it's about welcoming others. It's about helping meet their needs. Thus you have in James 1 and 27 that a part of pure and undefiled religion is to visit the orphans and widows in their afflictions. Because there's nobody else to really take care of them when the husband's dead and the parents are gone. Who's going to take care of them? Women did not go out and, and get a job. It just didn't happen. So you had all of that kind of thing to be considered. Though the word is not used by the Apostle John, he does give us an example of the same in his third letter. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. And that's an application of the things we've been talking about right here. It should be a characteristic of a faithful child of God, loving your neighbors yourself and being ready to show them hospitality. 
It makes a little more sense when you think of it that way when he talks about if, if you give just a cup of water. Then the Lord takes note of that. And sometimes that's what you had. You're running water. And by the way, when he told us to stop up and pipes to break, it wasn't there. So Paul expressed the same sentiments to the churches of Galatia. And you're familiar with this in Galatians 6.10, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially those who are of the household of faith, our brethren. All that has to do with having the charitable spirit, the desire to help somebody else, it ought to be just something Christians do naturally. I say naturally, just a manner of speaking. So as we seek to do good according to our opportunities, then what really happens? Well, we'll be contributing to the needs of the saints. Practicing hospitality, as Paul wrote in Romans chapter 12 and verse 13. You'll remember that one of the qualifications that a man must meet in order to be an elder is that he's hospitable. 1 Timothy 3, 2 and Titus 1, 8. Now imagine how that was back in his day. That is his day, Paul's day, the first century in view of what all we've been saying. Being hospitable, hospitable means you will good to the other person. You're mindful of their needs. You take note of them. A stranger comes by, whoever it is, you come up and greet them. Yes, it does involve a greeting. Uh, sometimes we'll say it like this, anything we can do for you. That comes from somewhere. Uh, are you really serious about that within a given context? But whether one ever serves as an elder or not, being hospitable is characteristic of all those who are faithful children of God. Peter had this to say about it, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 9. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. The idea common in the South, somebody dies, you take food. So they won't be burdened with food. Because even when people die, others still have to eat. Or you go over and try to help them with the household chores. Or you do this, the other. Now, you don't have to go back too many years for it entailed a whole lot more than that. Because it wasn't a funeral home. And you didn't embalm them sometimes. And you had to get it all in order and done within a day, usually. That meant building a coffin. It meant washing the body. It meant all of those kind of things. Death was up close and personal many years ago. Today, it's pretty well off in a hospital and off in a funeral home, and you don't live with it. But in those days, families had to do all of that for their children and so forth. Circumstances, situations, altered the display and the practice of hospitality. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Understanding what hospitality is, we can begin to understand why the inspired writer of the Holy Spirit had the writer of Hebrews say what he did about some of entertained angels unawares. It all had to do with illustrating Abraham being so ready to be a hospitable person and all that that entailed in his day and time immediately began to provide for these who came his way. So this passage specifically addressed something that is the Hebrews passage, something that happened in the past. Some have entertained. And thus the question comes, is, well, what happened? Now we have to go back to the Old Testament. Well, lo and behold, here's something in the Old Testament that's going to help me live a Christian life and apply Christian principles to my life. And I'll say again, if you want to see plainly how to use the Old Testament to benefit in being faithful to Christ under the authority of the new, see how the Holy Spirit reached back over there and used these things in the New Testament just as it's happened here. So we have to say uh, what happened in the case is where some entertained angels unawares. Well, there are two accounts in the book of Genesis, two accounts in the book of Genesis. 
First of all, there were angels that appeared to Abraham, Genesis 18, 1 through 8. Now, they took on human form, but nevertheless, they appeared to Abraham. Three travelers, they came to him where his tent, tent was pitched. And he received them, and you'll remember he provided food for them. Now, from the next chapter, after that, it's where we learn they were angels. It's interesting, the three of them that come there, Two of them left, and they proceeded on the mission they were there for in the first place to Sodom and the cities of the plain, Sodom and Gomorrah. And the other, and lo and behold, the other one is identified as the Lord, if you read the account. And he's the one that remains behind and reveals to Abraham that the plan is to punish the people of those places, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities of the plain, for their intense and long-term wickedness. Well, then here these angels go on to Sodom, Genesis 19, verses 1 through 11. That's after, of course, they left Abraham. And those two angels came to Sodom. And to cut the story short a little bit, Lot sheltered them. I say that's hospitality in his home in view of the vile wickedness of the men desiring immoral activity with these angels. I think, and I'll add this in beside, that it's very interesting to watch people who want to say that homosexuality is not sinful, and they try to go back to this business with Lot. And they say, you see, really... God destroyed that place because the people of the city were not hospitable. Well, of course, that is just complete uh, neglect of the meaning of the words and the scripture and the narrative and what it says. But look how hospitable Lot was. Well, when the men of the city surrounded Lot's house that night, of course, they were not asking and requesting. They were demanding uh, that the men who came to him, we know them to be angels and looking like men. When uh, Lot refused that, we see Lot not only provided shelter for them, but he provided a form of protection for them. Now, I don't think the angels needed Lot. In view of what they're about to do to that city, they had plenty of power to do a lot of things, and they do even to the crowd, cause them to go blind. But nevertheless, look at the attitude of Lot. That's the point. The desire to help. Even putting himself in danger in order to help. I remind you of the Samaritan. In the account of the Samaritans, we call it. And what he did for Jews who hated him would have a thing in the world to do with him. But yet he had that desire to be helpful, so he did. And he put him, left himself wide open for criticism. Sometimes being hospitable and treating other people as the creatures of God they are, our fellow human beings, but especially our brethren, you, know, you can leave yourself wide open for criticism. Why do you want to have anything to do with them? Remember Christ? Remember what we studied last week about going into uh, Matthew's feast, invited to it. And lo and behold, there are these publicans, tax collectors, Jews who are tax collecting for Rome, and other sinners. Well, lo and behold, what? Well, he came underwent all kinds of criticism. Few of us have undergone some of that kind of thing over the years because we associated with people. Others didn't like us too. I think we will all do well, no matter how much Bible you know and how well you practice it, to ask sometimes, am I prejudiced? Am I bigoted? Am I showing hospitality? We're humans. Any of those things can work on us. In 1969, I related this to you one time, and I was asked to preach to a black congregation of Baptists. Well, I stirred no little turmoil even among some of the members. Because I would go down there and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in a Baptist church to them. They knew ahead of time that I wasn't going to preach Baptist doctrine, that I was going to preach the gospel. And they were told that. 
We had a good session last. I preached a little while that afternoon, but <laughs> nevertheless, it kind of felt good to get all the amens and stuff they give you because they heard some things my brethren heard for years and years and years, but it's brand new to them. They hadn't heard. But as it may, one of the chief women of that church was a maid to one of our members. And lo and behold, we had a meeting not, late, not too long after that, later in the summer. And they had a spasm because some of those people came up there. Not even members of the church come to the gospel meeting because I went down there. They would be ashamed of themselves. I don't believe people can go to heaven that way. If they can, I missed the boat a long time ago. And I know they missed it on the true meaning and practice consistently of hospitality. Of entertaining people in the way we're talking about it. So these are the events, Genesis 18, 19, to which the Hebrews writer is referring. Now, here, here it is. The point of the Hebrews writer, I'll say again, is this. As Abraham, and they knew how Abraham was. He's the father of the faithful. He's the epitome of what they wanted to be. If Abraham and Lot showed hospitality, and remember Peter said the life, of those wicked people vexed his righteous living from day to day. So these are two men that still showed hospitality in the middle of a mess. If these two men showing hospitality to the angels who visited them did that very thing in that time period, shouldn't we? We're to show hospitality to others. That's the point. It's not that angelic beings are going to come down here on this earth like they did with Abraham and Lot and we're going to entertain them. The point in the message, the context is we're to show hospitality. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. So here it is done in the past in the Old Testament, in this case the patriarchal age. And it shows you these principles have always been what God expected of mankind, but especially the members of the church who wear the name of Christ. You think of Jesus, and we sing it with the children up here, but Zacchaeus was we little man, we little man was he. He couldn't see Christ. He wanted to see Christ, climbed up in that sycamore tree, and he saw him. And Christ called him down before all that crowd and said, Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house today. Well, I can think of people that would be upset if you were to go to certain people's houses. And Jesus did not mind upsetting people when it was needful. Some read what the Bible says about how God supernaturally worked in the past. They know he continues to have the power to do the same thing today. Thus, they think he must operate that way today. So when they read in the Bible about angels appearing in human form and some men showing them hospitality, then they assume that some, maybe even they themselves, can continue to entertain angels today. And they miss the whole point. The whole point is, are you hospitable like Abraham was? Are you hospitable like Lot was? And what is it to be hospitable today in our given situation? So that assumption is simply not supported by this or any other passage. And again, the main point of this passage is not about angels. It's about hospitality. The reference to Abraham and Lot entertaining angels simply is an illustration of the main point. So Hebrews 3 in verse number 4 is an admonition that is designed to cause those readers and us today to examine ourselves. And do we? It's a part of examining yourself to see whether you be in the faith. That's what it is. So are we open to showing hospitality to those who are in need? Do we recognize opportunities that are presented to us to show hospitality? Do you ever think about this in concerning providential care of God? 
God sometimes may providentially present something to us just to see will we do what our Savior would. There's nothing the Bible says he wouldn't. So how can we prepare ourselves to show hospitality to others? Well, we think about what we do in this day and time. It is different in circumstances, situations, in society and in the culture from then till now. But the attitude and the desire to help others is always there. And we should be looking for that opportunity. Are we looking for people we can help? Do we make the necessary preparations to be able to help? Do we welcome those who come across our path? I may have related this. It happened a long time ago. I don't think we were even in Texas or Oklahoma where I preached at one time. I think we were up north doing a door knocking campaign. Things run together on me after over 50 years. But knocked on the front door, and this lady came to the door. And you could see she didn't want to be at the door and was aggravated, aggravated at you because she knocked on her door. And she was very short, and very crabby, and very whatever, <laughs> to be a grouchy thing. And she curtly shut the door after we had a chance to say a little bit about why we were there. So I got the bright idea, you might wonder whether it was bright or not, to go around to the back door. I knocked on the back door. The same lady came to the back door before she could say anything. I said, I just wanted to see if the lady that came to the front door needs some help that we can provide her. She seemed like she was so upset about things. The lady smiled and dropped her head and started laughing. And she said, I, I just been burdened down with so much. And she started telling all the stuff she'd been going through with. And she was just frustrated. Do you realize how many people are out like that today? All around us, and far worse than that. And so we had a good little talk and left there by smiling, and she laughed and apologized for the way she acted at the front door. It's something called the second chance, and I sure appreciate God granting me far more than one second chance. And we, in our hospitality, should strive to do the same thing. Got to have a little courage sometimes because she could appear at the back door with the 40 dogs and 90 cats and a shotgun. I don't know, but nevertheless, it's worth trying a few things. Are we willing to open our home to others? Now, that's maybe not as big a thing today as it used to be, but really used to be. It almost was a necessity to really help some people. But are we willing to do that kind of thing, to help in the matter of taking care of people? So as we strive to please the Lord, that's the point. We must remember the importance of showing hospitality. It's a way we show the milk of human kindness, Christ living in us, and being good as the Bible tells us what good is to those around us. As you therefore have opportunity to do good unto all men, especially those in the household of faith. And then remember James 1.27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the widows and orphans in their afflictions and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So some, some of what the world needs just to see Christ living in us, the Christian example, is just simply how we go about treating other people. Whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even also unto them. If you're not a child of God this afternoon, we urge you to think about our Lord. The whole reason that he came is to save men from their sins. Show them how a God would live as a man on earth so that we can walk in the example he's left us. We ought to do that. It's the way that's right and cannot be wrong. Believing in Christ the Son of God, repenting of your sins, confessing your faith in him, and being baptized for the remission of your sins and live faithful to him, which involves showing hospitality all the days of your life. As a child of God, have you wandered? If so, you need to repent. Confess those sins, and let's pray for you and with you for your forgiveness. If you're subject to the blessed invitation of our Lord, we invite you to come while we stand, while we sing.